happened to catch just a couple of seconds of a Major League Baseball game the other night on TV. And it was during the World Series. The situation was there was a man on third. And they needed one run to win the game. And this batter who was up had to hit at least a single. Strike one. Strike two. And then it happened. A home run. Welcome to Night Sounds. I'm Bill Pierce. Tonight I've entitled these moments together A Second Chance. Can you recall any time when God gave you a second chance at anything? Preferably something that was very significant. Well, that happened to me the day before this program was recorded. I was in desperate need of another opportunity to prove something. If not to God, to those around me. I welcome you to these moments, and I'm very happy that you're there. So many special things have happened during this time together in Night Sounds. There have been breakthroughs. There have been victories won. There has been comfort in the midst of sorrow and pain. So tonight I just want you to, to loosen up, sit back or lie back, forget the troubles of the day, and if you can, like, say, the Navy Flyers, who take that great fighter jet off the deck of the supercarrier, they've got to compartmentalize, put everything out of their mind except the target and the mission at hand. Even their families have to take a back seat to all of this. Well, tonight, we just thank him that he has given us a second chance. Not just me, but you, and maybe you don't realize it, but he's there with you and with me right now. I'm going to ask the a cappella male singing group GLAD to remind us of God's mercies and of the second chance we can all have through his divine love and compassion. Let's take a listen. Like a foolish dreamer trying to build a highway to the sky All my hopes would come tumbling down And I never knew just why Till today when you pulled away the clouds that hung like curtains on my eyes I've been blind all these wasted years And I thought I was so wise Then you took me by surprise Like waking up from the longest dream
I was lost in a fantasy that blinded me until your love broke through. The group Glad, opening our program musically tonight, a very stirring number. There's something about a cappella singing that, that's just so stark and realistic. There's nothing to hinder its sound, no accompanying support system. There they are, stone cold in the market, and it gives us hope for a second chance. And that's the title of tonight's time together, Second Chance. In his book, Changes That Heal, Dr. Henry Cloud was speaking about the second chance, and he, he said, there's nothing sacred about the first time around. Because time is experience. We can influence any past aspect of ourselves in the present. And in this present moment, we can reach the hurting, lonely child of our past. The lonely child, the hurting child, the untrained child. And whoever else we were is still alive. He or she is eternal and lives within us. Look how we react to different situations. I think there's a little difference between reacting and responding. We may respond to some situations like a rejected or hurt child. And often this child has not been reached by God's grace and truth because he or she is outside of time. They've not been brought into experience, not allowed to grow up. Maybe someone has told you, don't act like a child. But we never give that person what he or she needs to help them not act childish. And there's another disparity between childishness and childlikeness. Two different words, two different attitudes. A second chance. A baseball player has three chances. But God doesn't put a limit on it. Jesus said 70 times 7, 490 times we can be forgiven. And that is not a matter of mathematics, but of reality, of attitude, a second chance. We all have needed a second chance somewhere. As I mentioned a moment ago, I needed one yesterday. It was excruciating. I was in prayer all day and much of the night. But God showed himself merciful, and I firmly believe that he will show his mercy to you. But open your heart. May your life and your attitude, your mind, your spirit and your heart be an open book to him. And when God says that he can redeem the time, he can actually make our past different, as well as our future. If someone, say, missed out on an important developmental aspect, just because that stage is passed chronologically doesn't mean that it can't be grown up and transformed. We can all work through the trust issues, that forgiveness issues, the role of the later childhood. These aspects really are the likeness of God, our personalities, are still there in their pristine form. And maybe through injury or disappointment or betrayal or some hardship, you've been separated from time. Bring this into the light of experience and grace-giving relationships. Ask God to touch you with his compassion, to give you a second chance. We can be matured and redeemed in this process. And I wouldn't be here tonight on the air if it hadn't been that yesterday I received a touch of compassionate grace and forgiveness. There's not one of us who is mature enough and advanced enough or intellectual enough to implement a second chance in his life. He can cooperate with God who created and guides all life. 
But the ultimate second chance is given by our Redeemer because of Calvary. It was a privilege yesterday to explain this to a friend, to say that God is the God of the second chance. And God calls us out of the darkness of whatever kind of horrendous experience into the light of experience with Jesus Christ. Then time can be good time. It can transform us, develop us as we need to be developed. Time can do it. God does the healing through the time. But if we hide, time is bad time. For it's not being redemptive. So tonight the main message that we want to get through is it is literally never too late to open up to those who love us, God first and others. Because the aspect of ourselves that goes outside of time and childhood gets stored in its chronological state. It's still there, that same age when it returns. God can use this present moment. God can and does redeem the time for us. He provides the experiences we need to develop different aspects of ourselves through His body of believers, through prayer, through studying the Word of God. And as I was praying last night, I was very grateful that certain scripture verses had been memorized through the years. So I would suggest that, that you take the time to memorize God's Word, how it's come to my aid in moments of panic. For instance, last night, I didn't have the time or facility. I couldn't see through the tears. I couldn't find a Bible, you know. However, I recalled 1 John in the New Testament, chapter 1, verses 7 and 9. Verse 7 reads, If we walk in the light, as He, Christ, is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us continually from all sin. And then down two verses to that beautiful set of words in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Maybe you need a second chance tonight. Maybe you need a fourth chance or a tenth or a fiftieth. The compassion of the Sovereign Lord is here, right now. Not because I say so, but because His eternal Word bears the message through me to you. He bore it to me through the Word yesterday. I needed His mercy. And through St. Paul, His Apostle, He urges us to come to Christ, to find mercy and grace to help in time of need. Are you in a time of need at this moment? Do you need to know that there's someone there who not only cares, but is totally empathetic and knows what it feels like. That's why the scriptures say that Jesus is not only touched with the knowledge of our infirmities, but with the feeling of them, and that makes all the difference. That is real, authentic, valid caring. He's hurt, he knows you're hurt, and he's there. He cares when you're troubled and the whole world seems wrong He cares when the trials try to silence your song He cares when you're lonely though you laugh with the throng Jesus cares When your heart aches 
cares when you stumble in the heat of the day. He cares when you're burdened, you're too weary to pray. He cares when you fail him and your feet go astray. Oh, how my Jesus cares! Yes, Jesus cares. He cares when your heart aches. So take him. Jesus cares. Yes, Jesus does care. That's a very important and strategic message that we need to hear. This is Night Sounds, and I'm Bill Pierce, late at night, with so many of you. It thrills me when I read a, a letter from, say, an over-the-road trucker who's sailing on the interstates with that great giant 18-wheel rig. The other night I was driving late on Route 90 and I saw a great semi jackknifed in the middle of the grass and overturned. And as I saw the emergency vehicles descending and other truckers stopping, it reminded me that no matter how massive our situation might be, no matter how impressive we may be, we are all vulnerable. It doesn't matter about experience, a history of success, we are all in need in those moments. And I hope that this driver was not injured. I was going the opposite direction, so I didn't see much. But I sort of hoped he'd have a second chance, somehow, and not be laid off too long if he survived. We all need it, don't we? And that's the title of our time together tonight. And it's probably nothing you haven't heard before, but it's the experience we all need, and it can come from our Lord. I want to read you a little bit about David. There's a guy, King David, a very human person, very emotional, very repentant. And in all of his troubles, God singled him out as a man after his own heart. I have a little book I'm holding here called Golden Moments, celebrating 50 years of continuous broadcasting. Night Sounds has produced this little book in faith. And I'm turning to page 53 because we have 70, 80, 90 devotionals from personal quiet times that I put down in a journal after reading a chapter of the scriptures. Choosing a key verse, which in this case is 1 Samuel, Chapter 30, verse 6. Moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him. For all the people were embittered, each one because of his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And I just commented on this particular portion. David had emotionally hit the bottom, to say the least. In fact, the people were so supercharged with bitterness that they threatened to execute David. At that point, an important decision had to be made. Either remain immobilized by grief and fear or take control of the situation. And here's the good part. In his distress, David strengthened himself 
in the Lord. And he asked, Now what? God said, Pursue them. The result was victory and release of the captives. This could be the day of personal victory for you. We closed with this prayer, Lord, we confess that we often make important decisions by our own logic or in panic. We will try to remember to consult with you first before we make any significant moves. Amen. Reading from the book Golden Moments, celebrating 50 years of continuous broadcasting, I'd like to share this testimony with you. If you'd like to write Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois, 60189, for information. Tonight's program entitled The Second Chance and How We All Need It from Time to Time. I'd like to play a song for you right now that was performed by the Maranatha Trio. I think we need to hear it because it speaks of God's tender mercies. If there's anything most of us need, it's His mercy. Let's just be grateful that our God is a loving, compassionate God and that Jesus went all the way to that Roman cross for you and me so that we could have a second chance and a third chance, or if we needed it, a 17th. the singers just relieving us to know that God is a God of tender mercy. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy. We're so grateful tonight that we, in our environment, have tasted of your grace. And we want to spread that grace and the news of salvation to others who need a second chance. We're so grateful that you wait for us sometimes to pursue our childish goals and stumble around until we find out that it's hopeless and we come back and hold your hand. If there's anyone there who has slidden back or regressed spiritually, emotionally, touch that one as he or she reaches out to you for tender mercies. In the name of the Savior who made it possible, our Lord Jesus, amen. Thank you again for sharing these moments with me tonight. I feel it's important for us to know that God isn't finished with us yet. 
we do have another opportunity. Our mailing address, Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois, 60189. We'd love to pray for you and your concerns and stand with you in God's mercies. Until we meet again, have a great day tomorrow and a merciful good night.